Hello and welcome to the video. This is a look at a couple of the new things from Toolkit RC. First thing is this thing here. This is the M7. This is uh, the newer version of something that I've already got called the M8. It's a little 200 watt charger, but it does an awful lot more apart from that as well. And the M8 that I've got here that's always sat by the edge of my workbench gets to use all the time to test things like signals coming out of devices. In fact, you saw it when I did my head tracker video a couple of weeks ago. The other thing we're going to talk about is this thing here, the P200. This is a cute little desktop power supply. It is dinky. It looks in the images like it's going to be massive, but that is it. It's a cute little desktop power supply that will give you the voltages you need if you're into the DIY part of the hobby. So for me, for example, this has been very handy in the past week or two, playing with things like the head tracker and other things to supply exactly the right voltage for whatever component that I'm playing with. Plus, it allows me to very easily also read off the kind of current that's been used as well. So this has come in very handy too, uh, AC and DC powered. So let me unpack these things and we'll go through the specs and I'll uh, put links down below if you want to go and have a look. So the first one we'll talk about is the cute little M7. Again, this is one of those things from Toolkit RC that actually does an awful lot of different features. So it's not just a charger. And again, this is a 200 watt charger, max 10 amps, um, USB port at the side, which is very handy. It'll also measure PWM, PPM, SBUS stuff. It'll also measure the resistance of the batteries. It'll also output PWM, PPM, and SBUS signals, which is very handy if you're trying to spoof a setup so you can make sure that it's actually working properly. It's really small and compact. And it's only when you put it beside my beloved M8 that I use all the time that you can see how modern and flashed it looks. On this particular new model, I love the screen. Having a nice clear color screen is great. Uh, the smaller sizes of these screens can mean though, if you're an older person like me, and your eyes aren't as good as they once were, that it can be a little bit harder to read, but you can turn the brightness up. The scroll wheel is much nicer than the rotating control to get to the places you want to. Nice positive beeps and feel to that. Also, settings on here if you want to charge uh, UAV batteries but to be honest this is kind of one of those things that's handy to have in the bag when you're at the field it's DC power supply only but it means that if you need to top up batteries at the field as well as also potentially check things while you're at the field this is fantastic but as I've said for me my version of this, my current version, which is the M8, however, I might replace it with this nice new shiny black version, is used more for all of the measurement of radio control signals that we typically use, PWM, PPM, and SBUS. It is worth its weight in gold when you're just not sure whether or not the signal that you think is coming out of that particular unit is or isn't. You can just pop it onto this device and you can absolutely check. Second thing to talk about is this P200. Now, when I ordered this, I thought it was going to be an awful lot bigger. Um, desktop power supplies tend to be a size of a couple of house bricks normally. So it was a pleasant surprise to see how small this was. This can sit in the pile of test equipment by the side of the bench that I pull on when I need it. However, because of its smaller size, I think you have to be a little bit careful here and not try and assume it's going to give you all the same advantages as one of those big professional grade desktop power supplies. But if you're like me and you constantly have battery eliminator circuits uh, kicking around your workbench to give you the five and six, seven, eight, nine volts that you need for whatever it is you're setting up, this is going to be very handy indeed. Input voltage, both AC and DC. Air, AC is standard mains voltages, everything from 100 to 240 volts. DC, 7 to 28 volts, uh, 10 amps, 200 watts maximum. The main outputs everything from 1 to 10 amps and 1 to 30 volts. There's also a USB output on the front as well, which will allow you to run 5 to 20 volts if you have anything that wants to run like that. And there is also short circuit protection on the output, which takes less than a millisecond. But it is the size of this that will take you by surprise. It's only 84 by 63 by 78 millimeters, about 360 grams. Now I have been playing with this for the past week or two and using it with some of my setups and it has made things a lot faster and easier. 
In fact, there's a video coming up soon talking about the wireless option for the head tracker stuff that I did recently, and it was great to be able to power it from this Toolkit RC P200 and see exactly on the screen how much current it was pulling, so I knew how I could power it from the radio. Nice intuitive controls with nice solid feeling scroll wheels, decent power outputs, 10 amps, 200 watts max, but to be honest, most of us are gonna be running anything between 3.3 to 12 volts on the bench anyway, and it's perfect for that kind of size. There is the ability to use the firmware and it is also nice and quiet as well. Even though it has a cooling fan on the back, because I'm not pulling particularly large amounts of current, uh, this thing has been nice and quiet, which is great for when I'm recording. Only a couple of things to watch out for this. First of all is the double power on process. Uh, you, when you plug it into the mains at the back, then you have to turn it on at the back and there's also a power button on the front. That still won't engage the outputs. Uh, you have to separately engage those as well, which is a nice touch. But be careful of that two stage to get the unit turned on. Although there is a short circuit protection on this as well as overcurrent and over voltage, just be aware that if you turn off the voltage, it does gently uh, discharge. I'm guessing there's some quite decent capacitors on here somewhere that's smoothing everything. Uh, so although it might be at 5 volts, once you turn the output off, it doesn't immediately turn off. It takes a minute or so for everything to run down to 0, 0.00 volts. Testing it with the voltmeter here, the accuracy of the outputs is pretty good too. Only a couple of cables in the box. There's the one with the banana clips, which is the ones you're going to use, I imagine, most in the hobby. Uh, there is also an XT60 connector as well, if you wanted to use that. It's standard 4mm banana-style plugs in this, so that'll take most of the stuff that's probably kicking around your bench if you do like soldering and doing the DIY stuff. So that's the M7 and the P200 from Toolkit RC. The M7 is a smashing little 200 watt pocket charger that is great for the field, but actually worth its weight in gold when it's on the bench when you're looking to troubleshoot signals from one part of the system to another. And the other thing then is the P200, a cute little bench top power supply that will give you all the voltages and currents you need for normal DIY stuff on the bench. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.